going to go take the trash out. Oh, how exciting. Oh, yeah. Our uh, trash, unfortunately, is in the park a little way, so we got to kind of drive through the park. But we don't we'll, really have to. We can walk. Yeah, we can walk <laughs> it. But we're going to go get gas, and that's kind of why I wanted to, the camera to get fired up here. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a date. thing that we found while we hit the road was we thought that we could just do like uh, let's say gas buddy right uh, gas buddy is an app that is um, something that we had whenever we lived back in Ohio we still had a house and everything and it worked but it, it would never work for us because we always used more gas than what the app allowed a discount on. So what we found then we thought, oh, we'll hit the road and we'll get, you know, gas from, you know, we'll get another gas app or something. We'll, we'll get something, uh, you know, a gas card or, well, it don't work. It doesn't work that way. Um, and the reason it don't work that way is based on you moving through states that they don't even, you know, Ohio don't have a Wawa as far as I know. Um, they definitely don't have a Bucky's. And there's states that we go to that, you know, don't have a Phillips. I mean, it's, what we found is you've got to pretty much just jump. you got to jump constantly state to state to state, gas station to gas station to gas station. So you just got to have whatever card is available. Um, so now you're carrying around a bunch of cards and stuff. But uh, in our case, we found that uh, Wawa works pretty good. It's an app. Um, we So I, I know it's a funny gas station name. I remember the first time I heard it, I'm like, what is Wawa? That don't even make any sense, but it kind of sticks in your head after a while. As far as I know, it don't mean anything. It's probably just a name they want you to remember. So that's what we're going to head over there. And the reason is, is because the uh, state of Florida had suspended the tax on gasoline, which was like 25 cents a gallon. Yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know, usually the, you know, your gas that you're paying for at the pump, obviously, uh, sometimes is expensive. <laughs> I think More. California is the most expensive but a lot of that expense comes from uh, the taxes that the state applies like I said Florida has 20 Ohio's the same way Ohio's got quite a bit of tax on gasoline 30 yes yes yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's up there so every gallon you're paying for a bunch of it is tax um, so anyways Florida has suspended the tax on gasoline uh, for a period of time mainly because of the hurricane, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I think it was all of October. And it is. it has expired, or it's going to expire today. Well, we are at a quarter of a tank, and I've got a 48-gallon tank, so... Might as well fill up a little cheaper. Yeah, and I'm going to use the Wawa app, too, and I'll get it even cheaper based on that. So we'll get basically another 15 cents off a gallon uh, by paying with the app. So what we're doing here is... Uh, backing down garbage alley <laughs> garbage row garbage alley whatever you want to call it they they have a bunch of recycles here a bunch of recycle cans which is cool yeah it is pretty cool they, they recycle oh, yeah you can see that yeah there's a lot of a lot of cans they don't have them all flipped around because not everybody's here yet yeah um, when they all get here though they'll have them all full and I'll tell you what, I don't know what the deal is, and I'm not saying that this is bad or good or it's just different. Um, man, these Canadians, the French Canadians, holy cow, do they go through wine and beer. <laughs> Woo! I don't know if it's just at a certain age that they all, that's their thing. Hey, we retired, now we're just going to drink every day. But man, we, we usually come in here and there's just cardboard boxes for wine and and uh yeah what's that box wine because that's real popular yeah, i've seen that yeah yeah i don't know uh, what it is 
So anyways, we're going to uh, go get gas and um, we'll pick this up uh, probably another day. I just wanted to talk to you about that gas discount feature um, whenever I thought about it. So don't plan on necessarily having a single gas card and it working everywhere. There is an exception to that and guess what? It is another benefit if you have a diesel pickup truck or a diesel yeah. motorhome. Uh, however, still for us, the, the cost of the diesel and everything and the expense um, uh, and the initial purchase price of the diesel over what this is and payload for that matter, uh, it wasn't, it still wasn't worth it for us uh, personally. But um, yeah, it's just something to think about. Hello YouTube, this portion of the video is sponsored by Discount Lots. Discount Lots is a place that you can make your future happen by buying a piece of property the easiest way that I can think of. And that is direct from the people that own the property. Once you go to their site, they have a map, they have lookup tools, you can adjust the acreage size that you want, you can look up the pricing. Once you find the property that you want and you click on it and you decide to purchase it, once you buy it, you'll be contacted by their people that'll walk you through the rest of the process and at that point it's nothing more than making a payment a monthly payment and you own property getting rid of the middleman that works out the best that's because they don't have to deal with realtors on any level Art, what is on their website you will not find anywhere else yeah the fact that they've got it streamlined makes it so much easier what we want you to do is just go and browse it um, click the link in the description, go browse property, see if there's anything that catches your eye so you can get an idea. Now realize a lot of these properties, you're gonna have to put in your own water, you're gonna put it, get your own electricity run there. That can be done. That's been done for hundreds of years. That's how people do this stuff. They call the local uh, utilities commissions and they say, hey, I'm going to buy a piece of property out here. What's it gonna cost for me to get power out here? What's it gonna cost for me to get water? You know, which most of the time it's gonna be a septic system. All the information that they list in their website for that piece of property gives you the parcel number, uh, gives you GPS coordinates. So you can just rattle off, hey, I'm looking at parcel number 685B-2320. Um, how much is it uh, for taxes, you know, property taxes out there? Um, how hard is it for me to get electricity out there? That You can research all that, and that's over the phone. Um, but they do suggest that you go out and look at the property. I mean, there's, there could be a, a different impression once you get out there than what you see on pictures. Pictures can be deceiving, but they do include quite a few just so you can get an idea. Now, if you decide to purchase and you want to save even more money than you're already saving going through them, we want to give you a code, DLRVDAYDREAM10. Use that code, you'll get 10% off your purchase. And guess what? Your dream of owning your own land begins, and it's nothing more than just a click in the description. Another horrible day here in November, <laughs> as you can tell. It was supposed to rain, but it never did. <laughs> yeah, and the rain's just like, and then it's gone. But it did rain. Yeah, it didn't rain today. It's so. It is, yeah, it's a really nice day. Yesterday was uh, pretty muggy. Yeah, it was real humid yesterday. It didn't even, even in the evening, it didn't really cool off so much. So we're going to uh, go grocery shopping. Uh, we also will take you down to, uh, I think we're gonna go to Long's Park and then maybe the Veterans Park. Okay. Woo, it's warm out. I didn't realize until we got in the truck here. But yeah, the, um, the park's starting to shape up. See, this is the reason that we like this park. And somebody, I, somebody said, oh, you don't have to disclose your location. Where are you? We've disclosed the location. We've talked about this park plenty of times. This is Southgate Village, mobile home, 55 plus RV park, whatever. No pets. There's no pets here. And you have to be 55 or plus. Um, the lot rents are high but it's Florida in the winter, and it is in a very desirable location. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the thing that we like about the park is they really take care of it. I mean, other than FedEx coming through here, not 10 miles an hour, lady. Not 10, I don't even know. Oh, she did 10 around the corner because she was gonna roll it, if not. <laughs> but um, what I'll tell you what we like about it. Uh, look at, just look down through here. None of these mobile homes are any, none of them are newer than the 70s. And they are well taken care of. And it's because the guy that runs the park comes through every year when everybody is back. He comes through around February, like the first week of February. And him and the, the park manager, 
notate everything that these uh, mobile homeowners need to do to their property. Now, the uh, park is mowed and taken care of. That's part of your, your fee. Not just the RV, you know, lots, but the mobile home parks, uh, mobile home lots also. They're all mowed, weed eated, edged, all by the, um, the landscape company that comes through here. But the mobile homes, they're responsible for their landscaping. Right. They, they have to, if they got any additional stuff, like she's got all these plants and you can see the rocks and the, and the edging and stuff over there um, and all these plants. She weed eats all that. She takes care, I should say, she weeds it out. She takes care of all that. Just like these people have a little edge thing with some rocks, they take care of that. Same with right here, they take care of that. They also trim their trees, trim their bushes, except for some of the palm trees with the bigger palms. Usually the landscape guys, they just yank the, the, the leaves off, or even the park manager. He comes around on the golf cart and he picks up whatever debris you have. Like if, if somebody, let's say they trim their tree, they trim it all back, they, you can put all your clippings near the edge and the park manager will come by with his golf cart with his uh, trailer and he'll load that up and go take it down to the dump uh, the dumpster that they have for um, vegetation um, of course if it's trash he ain't taking that you've got to take that to the dumpster yourself That's what that guy was coming in here for to switch out that dumpster yeah that big dumpster that he's that the truck just drove by it's time I mean it's loaded up so he'll drop that new one off and pick up the old one full of vegetation and get out of here. Uh, the uh, other thing that you're responsible for, and the, the owner and the park manager pretty much put it together, is if you have like dead trees, or you have trees that are way overgrown or so, to the point where they need to be removed, um, they mark it down and you're to do it. You have so many days to do it. If your mobile home is not pressure washed, you have so many days to do it. Um, if your rooftop needs to be pressure washed, you have so many days to do it. If you pressure wash your unit over and over again and it's not looking any better, guess what? He will indicate it's time for you to paint your mobile home. And he'll give you the name of these guys that have been doing it in here for years. I mean, this park has been with his family for 60 years. So he'll tell you, hey, these are the guys that go ahead and call. They're the most reasonable. They give you a discount. They know us, you know, the whole thing. And we've seen it. We saw it last year. They will literally spray paint these whole mobile homes. They, they've got a, it's like a body man spray set up. They'll mask everything off and they, they paint it all. And, and actually it looks pretty good. I mean, you can see like that one that's a little bit in the distance on the camera, it's, but it's basically um, uh, not this one here, which is pretty good, but the next one, I mean, that's repainted. That's why it, you know, it looks pretty sharp. I, 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 I like, I'm I don't care, it looks sharp. The edges are nice and straight. Everything is solid color. There's no fading. It's all one uniform color where each color is what color those are i don't care i just see that they're they're nice and they're, it's sharp yeah, it's sharply it nice, done it is nicely painted so yeah that that's why we like this park so much and that's why it is expensive um and what's expensive uh i think if i'm not mistaken that these rv sites are 675 now yeah they're, so it's 675 a month and you pay for your water which is divided among the residents um, there's a couple different legs that you share with. So um, let's say 10 trailers in this section of the park, or maybe 20 trailers in this section of the park, they divide the water bill between themselves. Um, if you're an RV, you don't pay for water. Uh, electricity is your responsibility that's your bill 100 percent if you're a mobile homeowner um, if you're an RVer you don't pay for the electricity I don't care if you're here year-round you don't pay for the electricity um, however as an RVer you pay more now our site is a is it a premium site or an elite site I can't remember. there's like I three different three. levels and this is I think this is premium I think um, but anyways our lot rent during 
what's not peak season we're still not peak season even November even December's not peak season it's eight hundred dollars a month for the entrance into peak season maybe we got a good deal yeah I think we got a good deal too I think this site is supposed to be nine and a quarter yeah I think it's 925 a month um, now that includes all your water all your electricity you can get mail delivered here which the post office now knows we're a resident at this address uh, you get all your packages delivered here um, so you'll have to the pricing in here is is being adjusted accordingly and he just changed something I'm gonna tell you this guy was the, the guy that owns the park um, AJ really nice guy and he was he was the best deal in town for so long and everybody knew it and it's like nobody wanted to say anything um, because they didn't want ultimately the price to raise up um, but they all knew they were getting a really good deal so let me tell you what he had been doing for the who knows how many years it's been a long time he was saying that if you stay here you can you can stay here uh, for four months and pay whatever the lot rent is for an RV which back then I mean it was as low as uh, $700 I think like so yeah you could have had a lot rent in here that was $700 a month and once you got to uh, the time that you wanted to leave after your four months um, you would uh, pay fifty dollars a month storage for your RV not to be moved so basically like this lot here the lot that we're on the, again this is an elevated site as far as price wise the price tier is a little bit higher but we would have paid let's say 750 a month for four months and then when we left here we would just close up our RV and we would leave and we would go back let's say to Ohio and we'd pay fifty dollars a month for our RV to sit here on this site um, we could have even left it plugged in and paid a little bit more for electricity uh, not much more but nonetheless that's what the deal was and you could come down and check on it you could even come down and probably stay for a couple of days or a weekend in it and then fly back and not have to pay any more than that fifty dollar storage that's been going on for years well finally he's like no I've got to do something different so now finally he's made it to where you have to pay for six months whether you stay here two months four months or six months you have to pay for six months as if you are actually occupying the site so you have to pay that full price um, then when you leave the other six months you're paying hundred and twenty five dollars for it to be on the site and left behind and it's a good thing because like this summer this last summer he had requests for RVers to come in here and stay and he had no sp this is in the summer for a year they for, wanted to stay for, for a year people were wanting to stay for the whole year and he couldn't he had no spots available and instead of getting eight hundred dollars a month or seven hundred dollars a month for the site he was getting a buck and a, I'm sorry he was getting fifty dollars um, and even now he raised it to a hundred and a quarter uh, it's it's like I said he's like coming around and saying wait a minute I need to get on this bandwagon called inflation because his costs haven't gone down and he's still you know dealing with taxes going up and all the things that go along with owning a property and he is really looking for long term yeah he loves having long term RVers in here he's asked us even again he said if we had if he had a cancellation yeah. do you want to stay yeah he wanted us to stay <laughs> and and quite honestly there's only a few things that are stopping us from doing this year round in this park number one it's 55 plus and at some point we would like to have maybe visitors that come down maybe like our son or something like that and our son to stay maybe he wants to stay a month maybe he wants to stay two months he can't do that he could stay two weeks right. and visit but then he's got to leave so that's that that doesn't work for us I mean we we would like to give the ability for uh, if somebody wants to come visit for a longer period of time they can um, the second thing is I, I can't work on anything I can't and when I say anything for example 
there is a, it's like a 1969 LTD or Mercury Marquee or something like that. And it is in very good shape, very, very good shape. And it said was running when parked and they wanted $2,500 for it. And man, if I was back home, I would not have been able to get the money out of my pocket fast enough because that car up north in running driving condition is a $4,000 to $6,000 car all day long. I mean, it would be nothing more than me getting the car, fixing the brakes, whatever it needs, tuning it up, uh, getting it all set up to where you can start, run, drive, turn, lights come on, heater works, if it has air, the air works, all that stuff, and then go up north and sell it for, for bank. It was, a, it was, I can't do that here. Um, I also saw uh, that somebody had a moped down here that was really inexpensive that I could make money on, and I really enjoy doing that. I miss doing that part of things. People always ask me, oh, you're going to miss your shop, I'm sure. You're going to miss your... I don't miss the shop. I just miss the ability to be able to work on stuff. Now, I'm sure once I'm working on things, I will miss the shop because I don't have all the tools uh, that I did before, and I'll be going, oh, man, I wish I still had my welder. But still, I, I, the main thing that I miss is actually being able to work on this stuff. Um, I mean, if there was a garage that was close and said, hey, listen, uh, for 100 bucks a month, you can rent this garage and you can do whatever you want in here. You can use all the electricity you want. You, you have unlimited access to it. And it was a big enough place that I could, you know, work on things. Um, that's something entirely different. I mean, that's something that I would think about. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't honestly know um, what the best thing for us is right now but the the park kind of sh is shorted because of that uh, so that's why we're not staying for an extended period of time but yep that's it we gotta get out of here we're at young's park in bureau beach and uh look at that beautiful house over there it's getting pressure washed yeah we told them that we wanted it clean before <laughs> we moved in they must have a pool over there too let's see all those flotation devices. Do you know what bridge that is over there? Um, what it's called? Uh, I can't remember. Well, we're going to that park over there. We're going to the park that you're pointed at currently. I'm excited to show you it without a pressure washer running. <laughs> it was kind of noisy. It is pretty peaceful here. I mean, it's just a beautiful place to come and just hang out. There's a sailboat going out. I don't know guys, I don't know what your November looks like, but this is what ours looks like. There's the airport not that far away, so there's planes flying over. If I could buy a piece of property, it would be in here, and I wouldn't even be able to afford the taxes. <laughs> not only that, but I'd get kicked out for working on a lawnmower or something, making too much noise, I'm sure. I'm sure they got rules on that. It's just be, it's just awesome though, but the nice thing is is you don't have to be a multimillionaire or even you know a pretty decent money maker um, to enjoy this. That's why they have this park. And you, you, the thing is is that's one thing I noticed about Florida, and Heidi will agree. I'm sure there's so much coastline, there's so much riverfront that they can offer places like this for free for people to go and enjoy. You don't have to you know it's not exclusive it's not some little tiny island that you can only get to by boat and enjoy i i, I just i love it, does, it i will say that it does kind of look deceiving when you first pull in here yeah it looks because like it's residential yeah it looks like it's you know you're going down a street that you shouldn't be on but <laughs> there's a plane there you got another power boat out there going past the sailboat and of course that's the beach out that way but yeah, Florida, that's one thing that they offer that I don't see in a lot of other places. I mean, even Myrtle Beach, there's limited places. Yeah, I mean, there's public access, don't get me wrong. Um, but Florida, there is so much. I mean, there are hundreds of miles of public beach that you can just even drive on in some locations. Uh, but you can just go out to and, and hang out. I, I just find it uh, to be a great area, and it's so hard for us... Um, you know, we were just talking about our sp channel sponsor there, and um, I should say a video sponsor. And, you know, buying property, it's for a piece of property that's like this, 
Um, there are some. I think the cheapest that we found was down towards uh, Port St. Lucie, Fort Pierce, going down through that area on the river, and it's across the street from the river. Right. And even then, they're in the four hundred thousand dollar range. Um, you can buy, a, you know, a, a modest home there, but I think that probably the cheapest land that you can get closest to this river, specifically in nice weather, is further up, going up towards uh, Melbourne, and uh, it's. Uh, across the street from US-1, although you can buy land that's on the the riverside. Uh, it's just a little sliver of property. It's very small. You can barely park your vehicle there and put a dock in. So, um, but I mean, that's if you're looking for this, which I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind it, especially if, if we were more in fishing. I mean, if we had a, a boat, um, I don't know if we'd ever own a boat though, but if we owned a boat, I mean, this is a no-brainer for sure. Uh, it's just beautiful. And, of course, this is part of the Intercoastal Waterway. So this thing takes you, if you wanted to, you could find a way to take this. You could get in your boat right here with a whole pocket full of money for gas. And you can make your way all the way up to Ohio and go through Lake Erie. Um, and then back down, you know, all the way back down to uh, Florida again. Uh, you can go to the golf and go down through the golf. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big loop though. That's a really big loop. All right. So we're heading out of here. We're going to head down to the next park, which we've been to before. Again, it's the veterans park and, uh, see what's that like today. It's just beautiful today. I love it. So we got to the park here and, um, over here in front of us is the museum of art and and then on the other side of that is the Riverside Theater. Am I right on that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a theater. Actually, theater, like stage theater. And there is always something going on there. I didn't realize it was close to, is it Veterans Memorial Park? Yeah. I think uh, that we're at. It's, no, it's Veterans Memorial Highland Sanctuary. Veterans Memorial High. Veterans? Listen, this is Riverside. Here, let me talk to you. <laughs> this is Riverside Park. Oh, this is yeah. Riverside Park. And just around the corner in Riverside Park is Veterans Memorial Island Sanctuary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to... There's a lot of walking and riding areas around here. Little picnic tables. Um, just an all-around... Oh, there's a... Um, there must be a boat launch here. Yeah, there's definitely a boat launch here. Yeah. And... Uh, so there's parking where you see those trucks over there. Oh yeah, look at it over there. See our house? We're getting it ready for us. <laughs> Told them we was going to be down here this winter. They didn't expect us this early. <laughs> I'm sure I can get kicked out of that property too for the same reasons. Being too loud. See me on a moped with a loud pipe. <laughs> Landscaping is very nice. Yep. The trees are nice. I swear these are the trees back at our place. Yeah. The bushes. <laughs> it looks just like them. Watch for not a stick. Yeah. Michael says there's not snakes around here. Then I hear something. It was something in the water. Kayak. It's such a pretty view. So pretty. And calm and quiet. You can relax. We walked through this park before and it's, of course, on video, same on a camera. Of course, we've come through other than that. It's a nice place, I'll tell you. The only thing I don't care for, um, Let's let's clear out some bushes here. Yeah, right. Let's clear out some foliage. I mean, those park benches, there's limited view. And that's the same with down here, too. It's kind of a tough situation because these things are keeping erosion at bay. Uh, so you don't want to pull out anything that's helping with erosion. 
I don't know. I, t I think that there's some planning that needs to be done there, some trimming or something. But it's a, it's really a nice park. <laughs> and this park will be here until the earth floods, I'm sure. Um, it's funded forever. They pretty much have funding for this and being this area is profitable. That's something that, again, I mean, we just talked about it at that other park that we were at. There is a different vibe when you're in uh, a place that the, there's actually money being made in the community. You know, there's money being exchanged hands, you know, even if it's as something as uh, crazy as tourism, there, there's money. God, there's a lot of squirrels here. Holy cow. They're all wanting your nuts. <laughs> but the thing with the getting into other parts of the country, uh, which we've kind of looked at properties throughout, um, you know, there, there's very few places that are thriving uh, that aren't huge cities. And you can't even tell they're thriving because it's just so busy. It's just overall busy. But this place you can actually see, you know, uh, improvements being made, roads, sidewalks, bike lanes, parks, everything's being improved and built. And there's a, there's a different, again, vibe that comes from that. I don't know how to describe it, but you don't feel as if you are uh, in a dead town. And we know a lot about that because where we lived, it just, it's just hanging on. Uh, not so much the, the little town that we lived in of Beloit, but Alliance, I know that's kind of like the main city that was up from us. It's like they're just hanging on. They're just surviving. I mean, even as I'm telling you this right now, they're tearing down the mall and they're building a Meyer store. Uh, that doesn't do anything for bringing in money for the community except for the taxes. And they probably gave a big tax break to get them to come in. You know, the only thing that's going to bring money into the, the community is, uh, you know, something that's being made and produced there. That's just, you know, uh, uh, consumption. That's all that is. You know, Walmart, Meyer, um, any new store that comes in. That's just the consumption. That's just a place for people to spend their money. Now, don't get me wrong places like that work for like Heidi I mean uh, she she worked in retail for quite some time and of course that helps with us getting money but the whole idea behind some of these places is you, you need outside money to be pouring in to help so that makes the people inside that are spending the money um, like us living in this area we're seeing return on it and we're not spending enough money here to see that return. It's because they have tourism in abundance to the point where they're getting kickbacks off of that uh, to, and they're sharing it with everybody. That's the other thing. You got to have a township or a community that's willing to put money back in to the community knowing that, a, you know, Florida being a big tourism state, the nicer the area, the more people are going to move here. I uh, definitely am no economics major on any level, but I'm gonna tell you that seems like basic economics of trying to get a place to survive. But there's nothing stopping us from enjoying this at a discounted rate at this point. Would we ever consider moving here? What do you think, maybe? Or just staying here? Probably just staying, but yeah. <laughs> from what we can buy. What's that? I said what we want is different from what we can buy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> We're pretty flexible. We could, I believe it or not, and Heidi will laugh about this. I think her and I could live in a three-bedroom condo. Yeah. Our lifestyle would change drastically. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be able to work on stuff. Right. Uh, the, our YouTube channel would totally change. Yeah, for sure. Thing is, I, I'd rather not do that. I'd rather. That don't sound like fun. 
Well, I mean, to I'll, a certain point, it would be fine. Yeah, it's like living in a glorified hotel. Yeah, that's kind of yours. Right. That's expensive. Yeah. But you don't have all the headache of home ownership, and if you get tired of it, you just walk away from it. You know, you just sell it and walk away from it and move on to the next place.